round. Well, are we ready to go? Be flat. Yeah, let her rip. Let her rip. Yep. Let her rip, tater chip. All right, all right. Okay, so um, one method uh, that I have found super handy in the shop for making quick tongs, for making a quick pair of tongs without doing the traditional method where you make the left, left, left type turn is uh, these I originally came up with this with this method or discovered it or I got to fooling around the shop anyhow one day. Um, I, I did it for under the power hammer. I wanted something that was very quick that I could throw under the power hammer and real quickly pull out some reins and, and make it out of some fairly thick bar stock because I had a couple large hammers I was making so I was kind of in a bit of exploratory forging mode to figure out how much material I needed and things like that. So that's what these tongs came about from. I've seen other guys do similar things uh, across the internet. Now, I don't know if it was before or after me, but anyways, here we go. So this is so this is just a pet of three eighths rod. We're gonna end up making this tong half here. Uh, I made this tong half in five heats, so hopefully I can make the other tong half in five heats. If if the board is right, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Uh, if you keep your if you keep all your methods the same and you know you don't change where you go from the anvil and how you draw stuff out so if I drew everything out on the flat of the face with this half if I do the same thing the volume should divide up equally if I go over the horn now I'm getting a different you know, I'm using a different method I'm just getting more stretch maybe than what I'm getting in width right and you're gonna end up with a different result or product so so this, this all comes down to the initial setup. I'm just going to heat like three inches of material, between two to three inches of material, depending on how big it is, what size bar stock you're working with. Obviously, if this is like one inch round or one inch square you're working with, maybe you might need to heat up four inches, four inch plus of material for this. But for, for three eighths, we're going to heat up about two to three inches of material. So I'm not doing any measurements. This is kind of one of the it's kind of one of the nice things about this kind of tong is it's not overly critical where you make your bins at in this tong. Um, your your nib is about the only critical portion. The rest beyond that don't really matter. And you'll see that when it goes to you know fold them, fold them up or put them together. Keep this a little bit more. All right, so our first bin will be on the near side of the anvil. I'm going to drop the tong ring down and drive that forward like so. Then I'm going to rotate a full 180 degrees, stick that over about equal amount, and then come back until we end up with something like that. It's a zigzag, right? I'm really slowing down here, so I will. Does anybody need to see that again? Just making a zigzag in it. Is that scalable? Is that, more is that process scalable? Yep, yeah, you can scale this up as big as you like. So, um, largest I've done so far is one inch round this way. And it's a very rapid way of doing it. So inevitably, when you're teaching or instructing, you got to slow down. So this is going to take more than five heats right. on this picture. <laughs> now I'm going out to the anvil. I already did one this way, so I'm going to do another one the same way. Hold at that 45 degree angle. Forge in my offset. various angles here. Forge a nice square boss. So. 
Now before we forge this anymore or work out this joint anymore right in here, we don't want to thin this out. This takes all your stresses right here in your jaws, is right at the base of that jaw. Before we thin much more of that out, we're going to heat back up in here. We're going to bring all this thickness of this bar stock down to plane with the thickness of our boss. And then we'll work out the rest from there and draw it out. Now, these, because again, I took a different heat, kind of took a little different approach to it, didn't get quite as long there. You can see that the bosses aren't exactly the same. That's okay. In these particular pair of tongs, you don't have to, because the nice thing about this zigzag setup in the boss area versus a boss that's specifically locked in is you can adjust that boss wherever it matches on that X. See? So you can adjust that X of that boss. So you can make a much wider set of tongs or a much narrower set of tongs very quickly and easily uh, just by adjusting where that boss is at. So that's the hard part. Now the rest is just dumb drawing out the material for the bar stock. So we're going to flatten more of that area behind it. You don't need a massive amount of material to make your reins. Um, I prefer reins that are very light. Very light. Thin. Um, just lightweight tongs. I would rather stretch the material out and get the material out to the length that I need and not have a whole lot of thickness in the piece in this direction. You don't really need it. You need thickness in this direction because that's where you're squeezing. You need thinness, you thin it in this direction to lose the weight out of it. So you have a lot of material uh, that you can move out of even a small piece like this, this 3 8 material. going to work this right down to size. And all I'm looking for here is something that's nice and square in the cross section up here by the boss. And roughly the same material thickness as what it is in the boss. cleaned up. So now we're ready to draw out the other end. Flip it around. We're going to grip it. Now normally when I do this, <coughs> I'll do this on a long enough bar. I'll just make the one end, make the other end, and you know, you, then you can draw it out. You have a handle that way. You always have a handle uh, to be able to work on. Um, I've got tongs in my shop. There's other methods if you want to do tongless, you know, to make tongs kind of methods where you don't have to use tongs to make tongs. But once you have your first set of tongs, it pays it pays you to uh, get comfortable with using your tongs as like a second pair of hands. Um, get real comfortable with using tongs. I am more at home using a pair of tongs now. I'm more comfortable using a pair of tongs now versus just holding a piece of bar stock by hand. It feels weird. I can't turn as I don't. I don't seem to have as much control or fine motor skills as I do with manipulating a pair of tongs. For whatever reason. It's just the way that it feels. So I've gotten used to just using tongs. So it's good to invest in a good pair of tongs to get you started and then you know, use those until you can make all your own. Black the supply. Yep. <laughs> Black the supply. Sponsored by. Fondly enough. <laughs> I've heard people buy them. <laughs> so the other thing, um, the other thing, it's really important, I find, to not waste time hitting cold steel. And this is just a general philosophy and practice. Uh, 
you know, get your material hot. You don't have to get as hot as that, but get your material hot. It moves so much more rapidly when it's hot. Don't play around with this stuff while it's cold. You're not doing yourself any favors. It's gotten cold. This is a waste of time for me to keep wailing on it. I'm going to get very little work done for the amount of effort I'm putting in. Get it hot again. That's why we're blacksmiths. We're not goldsmiths, we're silversmiths, we're blacksmiths. Get it hot again. Our stuff moves when it's hot and malleable. The the common thing that I, I see is you get afraid, right, when you start burning stuff up. That critical step, see sparkles, you're like, ah, oh, just lost it. Yeah. And so people tend to learn to go with colder and colder and colder forging temperatures to protect against that. And then you're well worn out by the end of the day. Or you feel it's necessary to swing a nine pound hammer at the steel to get any sort of movement out of it. This is a one and three quarter pound cross beam. So, you know, plenty enough, plenty enough hammer to do the work that we're doing right now. And as you can see, I'm in the flat. There's no special tricks here. I'm just working material hot. like my tong reins personally. I like them to have a taper, a gentle taper, gentle and consistent taper from the boss back. I like them to have a nice taper all the way back. Um, I like them to be the same thickness in this cross section, but in this cross section I like them to have a taper. So same thickness here, taper there. And I'll spend time at this heat. It's a perfect heat to planish out all your lumpy bumpies you may have acquired through the forging process. You want that quote unquote Instagram forge to finish hashtag on your work. This is how you achieve those results. Or you fake it like most of the Instagram influencers do and you grind it and then stick it back in the fire to get it all scaled up again. So, hashtag forge to finish. Yeah. Oh. Commercial, nice commercial break. Check. Commercial break. The billboard. This demonstration is brought to you by Christ Center Ironworks Brand Plus. <laughs> Say it. What that? <laughs> You're supposed to say, not the flux. <laughs> I didn't know what he was wanting you to say. So. <laughs> Alright, so don't know how many heats that was, but it was enough. Get that done. We've got our length correct. Mm -hmm. Good to go there. Yeah. Or at least I think it's correct. Looks correct. Yes, yes it does. Looks correct to me. <laughs> so I've been a big fan here lately of making <coughs> I've been a big fan of making integral tong clips in my tongs <coughs> um, just because I got a gravel shop floor and I'm tired of chasing all them little C clips 
everywhere across the gravel when they inevitably fling off. So I'm going to forge out a little bit, a little nib on the end to create a, a loop for my ring that I'll put these together with. Start by Is the result you can kind of look at them again the bosses aren't completely accurate um, I am not a tool maker I'll say that I'm not a tool maker I make my tools the tools are in support of the other work that I'm doing so I make the tools to do the job to fit the purpose I'm happy you know they don't have to be perfect they don't have to be the most beautiful tool in the world if you're selling tools right they should be a mark of your professionalism and your quality. They should be the highest produced thing that you can do if you're selling them. Um, if you're like me and they're just for the work to get done, maybe you're only going to use it once. Well, they don't have to be the most pretty thing in the world to be used once. <laughs> enough for the first demo. You put the ring in and close that loop up. Yep. So you just put the ring in there. I'll use probably a quarter inch rod to go through there. Yeah. Um, there's a bucket. We got quench. Yeah, here. Bill's table. of the fire and move on with my work. I don't like to quench things off. Just because you just never know when it has that little bit of extra carbon in it that's in things. That extra percent means a lot. Like a baby. Okay, it's good. There we go. I think you're going to burn the back side, right? Yeah. So, you can see those two go together. Again, you put a ring on this one. A ring on that. It'll slip up and over catch there on that little hook, little barb there, and then obviously, uh, you know, you drill and rivet. Uh, your tong ends there, but I'll pass those about. You guys want to pass them through there? Any questions on that? If you guys want a fun one to try, I suggest trying that one. You know, for main pair of tongs. As you can see, they're pretty rapid and quick. There's a lot of 3 8 material there. If anybody wants to do that. So, the other method, I'm only going to do one half of these. I like using quarter by one flat stock. I did this one in a video long, long, long time back. And thanks to Chris Schaefer and Josh for uh, preparing our stock for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Just had to throw that in. <laughs> I forgot to check that out. Uh, <laughs> But after a year, I think that, you know, it's a less smart. Look forward to it. Be good. All right, everybody. Take care, guys. Later, John. Safe journeys. All right, for the next trick. <laughs>
I'm gonna take a piece of quarter by one. Yeah, nothing in this sleeve, nothing in that sleeve. Whoa, there it is. Um, these what, eight inches? Can you cut them at eight? Yes. Yes. Cut at eight? Okay. Oh. I mean, you know, I don't have my measure on. How'd you measure? Well, I can see you. So you have to measure three times. Twice. Yeah, right. measure it three times. It, it, so let's just say it had multiplication involved. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. All right, so the quarter by one, the way I like this, this, this technique's mainly just in layout. Um, I like to take a cube of material or roughly what a square would be. So if this is one inch wide, you make it one inch long. It doesn't have to be that. If you want longer jaws, you have longer jaws. One inch seems to be about right and uh, fits just fine. So I'll measure back about an inch of material and I'll put a center punch mark on one edge. Okay. That's gonna be an edge that later we set down. So that's gonna become the set down for the jaws. So your center punch marks always go down okay. towards the handle. Just remember that. Then I come back from that mark and I do about another inch of material to the other edge and I give that a big center punch mark. So now you got two center punch marks, like a zigzag. So this one's going to be set down here. That one's going to be flipped over and set down there. This part between these two will become the uh, boss. This will become the nib and these will become the reins. So. But before I do, before I do anything with the set down for the jaws or otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and draw down the reins. Oh, that's going to make this a lot easier. Now, when I when I do this method on a longer bar, I measure out about how much material I want for the reins. Put a center punch mark, measure an inch, put another center punch mark, and then I do three marks across to s indicate where I'm cutting it off at. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then so. Uh, so while it's still on a long bar, say I'm running them down under a power hammer, I can then just work up to that first mark until I get it drawn out, cut it off, do my set down for my nib, and we're done. Uh, then, it, then it's done. So um, a little bit different of method. Um, That's only one set down. What's that? Then it's only one set down that way after, after right? Yeah, it's only one set down. Yeah. Yeah. Because your first set down happens when you're drawn out the reins. Sure. And then, so it's a total of two set downs, and then you put them together with a ribbon, and they're done. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get to observe Bill's method, but his was your twist. Did you do a twist, Tom, kind of method? No. It's a very similar, very similar technique, but instead of working on the jaws, I was trying to figure out a way of doing this, uh, and this is what I shared in the video, where you don't have to work on the jaw in first, right? Because I always found it difficult. I struggled personally with gripping yeah. around that jaw and working it. And it seemed like for me personally, I was always breaking. You know, I was like like overwork. You know, that end was bending constant while I was forging out my reins. And you know, and this was when I was first starting, so my hammer blows were all over the place. Uh, and I just found it, I just found it really difficult not to bring overstress the jaw, you know, yeah. so by the time I put them together, I had a jaw that was like <laughs> mostly on its way out, you know, and I had to arc weld it back together. <laughs> so, uh, so I was looking for a different way and then I, then this one kind of dawned on me, so to do it this way, so I just started that way. Yeah, that's just like de defeating when you have to go to the arc, arc welder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> It's like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot wrong with me. This fire and behave. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. It's not wanting to behave. Uh, you can't open it up a little bit on the bottom. Yeah, I don't.
I was playing with that earlier. I don't think that does much. That thing. really. Yeah. We'll, we'll do what we can with it. Either the green a little blower. bit closed or wide open. Yeah, I'll put the green blower on. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll blow the tent right out. I'm going to start by drawing my end down where I want my tongs to finish at some point. Draw the rest of the material into that. The goal right now is not to be pretty with it, just get the end down where we want it. Roughly three eighths by quarter. And I like to get stuff back in line just to help with my hammering in the next heat. One heat, we got about half done. I'm gonna stick it further afield and draw the rest of that material down into that. Just prove it. <laughs> you should see a doctor about that. <laughs> you probably should, huh? Yeah. How long have you been holding that yet? <laughs> Since Troy said, kill it. Tell him it's crooked. Tell him it's crooked. Just in equal opportunity is what that was. You're just trying to shift focus. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why he told me to do it. He yeah. wants the heat off of him. Exactly. No, he does that with the anvil chip. <laughs> well, I've never said much about the, uh, the bent uh, hammer I punch. Yeah, I know. I've been under the radar about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know when I the wind blows, the this thing gets goes. better. Yeah. <laughs> And the wind blows, it's like, oh, it's got heat. Hey. Oh, no, it's, no, oh, that's gone. Oh, Where's that green blower at? <laughs> he wants heat. It's on the table over there, but that green blower will blow that fire right out of the yeah. board. No, that's fine the way it is. We'll just, we'll work with it. Yeah. We'll work with it. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after all, he's only got to make one tong rain. All right, we'll go to that. Second, we'll go to that center punch mark. Set it down with some half on, half off blows. See, now once it's down to this temperature, you're just futzing around with it. Put it back in. Don't don't work with material that's gone that cold. It's just a waste of your energy. I'm hard of hearing. I can't hear anything that people are saying behind my back. It's just my ears are burning and they're kind of itching a bit. Right, so, yeah, that's probably wise. Like somebody's talking about me. I know it. We were just upset, upset about your language. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. The putts in around? Yeah. <laughs> 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 See, this thing flushed. The flux sticking around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the longest portion of this process, just drawing this down. Could you say it's long and drawn out? Yes, very yeah. long and drawn, drawn out. out. It's still crooked. The ducks. <laughs> Alright, so we got a little thickness in there. We need to draw off the rest.
It's all no. right. It's all right. That <laughs> is the pastor. That is the pastor. I'm assuming it. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming it's honoring to Jesus. That's all I'm assuming. Absolutely. 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 It's got best See how much material came out of just eight inches, a quarter by one flat? How much thickness I'm trying to move out of this piece? That's why it's important to pay attention to the volume of the material you're forging. Because if you got a piece to say, you know, I used to think that for tongs, for reins, right, if you wanted tong reins that were this long, you had to start with something that long. And you just end up with big, heavy, chunky tongs, and then that wears you out by the end of the day. Yeah, it does. When you've got to carry that weight, constant, that weight, it's hard to manipulate, you know? So What the heck is up with this rain? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I see. What in the wide wild world of sports is going on here? <laughs> right? I mean, it's a bunch. Like that point that you made a lot of. Yep. So, up next to your boss there, are you shooting for two thirds, two thirds? Uh, you just want to come into about a third of it. Yep. I don't know what you guys are doing. This exercise isn't supposed to be about. You guys get the point. I can keep drawing this out longer and thinner if I'd like. I'm going to leave it like it is now so I can move on to the next step. No way anybody wants to get around to forging and have a play with it. Yeah. Listen to me waffle on for the next hour while I draw stuff out. Because in my shop, I have a power hammer, so therefore, I do the part that I do the part that I that's necessary by hand, and then I'll go under the power hammer or the press to do the grunt work. Or that's a common thing we say in the shop now. I've got a Thomas for that, so yeah. I've got a worker for that. Yep. Like it's his problem, not mine. <laughs> yeah, it's Thomas. I've got a Thomas. Let him yeah. swing at it, you know? Yeah, that also will. Yep. Like I said, normally I don't cool Somebody stuff that quick. Right. I just set it off the side of the fire and work on the other half. Seems handy. Alright, so we've got our rain. A little stubby yet. It could be thinned out. We've got that drawn out. Can you record? Oh, yeah. no, sorry. I'm messing with stuff. So, we've got our rain drawn out. Again, if you assume this to be on a longer piece of bar stock, you'd have a nice handle to hold on to. As you can see, I just kind of very lightly forge that in. That'll get refined as we go. But now we're going to take put our offset in here and drive out our jaw of this piece. In here and forge that out. So, now, there won't be any twists involved in this. Oh. The, the twisting method has one flaw. It's one, there's one flaw in it. If you don't start with thick enough stock, if you don't keep that area heavy enough in that jaw when you twist it, that anywhere there's a twist in a bar, that's a weaker spot, wherever the twist is at. So when you're making up your tong jaws, keep that in mind. But you kind of want them to be fairly chonky up there in that boss slash jaw region if you're doing the twist type. I've, I've tried doing the twist type with this quarter by one. There's just not enough material in there um, to hold up very well. So maybe it'd hold up better in a higher carbon material, but, but you know, with like just mild steel, by the time you're done forging your, your fuller in there and you get it rounded out, 
there's almost like a quarter inch or less of material in that webbing and when you go to twist it it's it's fairly weak at that juncture so so starting with thicker stock like what Bill did here that's a smarter direction to go with doing the twist you got to do it doing the twist on and hot yep that's a critical step with that. A lot of, I made that mistake many a time doing twist hong too cold. You know, you bend it and it crack, get all cracked up right in there. And if you, if you put it in the vise and you think about it just a little bit, too late. Put it back. <laughs> yep. Waiting on a good heat. Just waiting on a good heat. Excuses, excuses. Hey. <laughs> Sandbox. I can, I can tell you if you're waiting on that cold coke up, you'll yeah. be waiting for a long time. Would you like some actual? <laughs> that's the <laughs> goofiest <laughs> damn cold <laughs> I've ever seen. It's, it's like, like it's half thing. coking, half not. It so. doesn't it doesn't turn the coke off. Alright, we'll put it on the anvil. Half on, half off blows. I'm just driving straight down. I'm letting the material spread naturally. We'll square up. And then I'm going to push it off to one side. Now with this, I have had the problem of, many other people have had a problem of, it's not just me, getting a small twist right in there. For whatever reason, when you go to offset it, I like to just, just tweak over on you a little bit. I do not waste time messing with that with a hammer. I go to the vise and go, and square it up. Yep. It takes three seconds to go to the vise and you know straighten that out. You will fuss around with this for an hour trying to get it with your hammer and you're just going to beat a rhombus and it never will be straight. So I generally stop there but if you want to round out this boss I'll show how you round out the boss. It's pretty simple then. You put it back in there and get it heat itself. Doing three different methods trying to make start the same thing. I just never know what's which next step is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> which method am I even doing? <laughs> yeah, so if you get a twist in that jaw, just go to the vise and go, or grab another pair of tongs and go. Yeah. It's yeah. a quick little yeah. straighten and you're done. Do you, do you have, have to make that sound? Or? Yeah, I do every time. Well, <laughs> well, well, Bill, I'm so no, sorry. If you, go, if you go wrong, it, it's, it won't. Do you twist it's it the wrong burp. way if you go wrong? Yep, yep. It'll have you to go like the wrong way. Down, isn't it? You're, you're, you're on to it. Make a sound. That's fair. I suppose you could uh, just do what it was. Two is a three. Four, five, I just want to sit down and all come. Take off that. Oh, you know, kind of, yeah. Give anybody $5 if they can sit down and make a sound of what First time I tried to use this bag to come with me. This will be the last time I try a canvas bag to come with me. That thing is so annoying. I'm like, hey, maybe that'll be handy. <laughs> See it? Perfect. It came out perfectly square. It's the very part of it. Oh, what sound? I missed it. What sound did we have to make on that part? Okay. And then when it's then when something's wrong, it's. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, the shaggy noise. You know, Ruh -ruh. you know you messed up then. <laughs> Just pop and loose the extra forge scale because it did get a little hot there. There you go. That's just one method. It's actually, so as the first person to put that method online. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I, I guarantee you I wasn't the first guy to ever take to do that method in the cross course of history. But I was the first guy to ever put one, put a video out on doing that method 
at a quarter by one flat on YouTube. And after that, there's been countless other videos of people doing a very similar thing. And uh, there's a fun story, well, not so fun at the time, but I can, I'm amused at it now. But I actually went for a teaching gig at some point. We didn't know how the YouTube thing was going to pan out. So I actually applied for a teaching gig at a craft school um, to take and teach. And I was going to teach my tong method that I thought was pretty slick, that I had been developing, making the various types of jaws and stuff. Well, I did a series, like an 11-part series on YouTube about it. Well, somebody had took and, and went through that whole series, yeah. and they were already teaching that method at oh. the school. So they're like, oh, well, we already got a guy and teaches his method. That's his method oh. of doing things. I'm like, um, what? Yeah, like, I've it. never seen somebody do it on a quarter by one flat large stock tongs. And, and so anyways, um, I, I just thought it was amusing. And, and it was a guy, he actually had emailed me and asked me questions. Wow. Like more specific questions than I covered in the video. And so, <laughs> so I ended up not getting the teaching gig because uh, well, I already not. taught the... Pleasures. Yeah, you know, you know, I already taught the thing, so... But yeah, that's what happens when... Uh, it's kind of a surreal thing, you know, sharing the art there, but... Yeah, that's what happens when the iron sharpens iron and you... <laughs> and it gets lick, it yeah. gets lickety sharp. It's better, yeah. quicker, faster, mm -hmm. stronger. Yeah. Yep. Than the original yeah. thumb instrument, so... Like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's exactly. But anyway, so I... I know for a fact, if you go on YouTube and you look up the, you, you look up the date, look it up by date, mine was the first. You'll have to go through pages and pages and pages to take and find it. I did a whole series on these, so if you want to watch on YouTube, well, I've shown how to make everything from farrier tongs to wolf jaws this way to bolt jaws to box jaw tongs this same way, all out of a very similar technique, but there you go. Pass that about. Thanks, Roy. Yeah, Roy. Thank, Thank you. you. There you go. Uh, I shall shut up now and hide in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Record that part. <laughs> hey, hold on. Can you say that? It's not, not crooked. Yeah. One. It's straight. It's straight. It's good now. Here, fix the. Take one down, pass around. I am going to take. Yeah. yeah. Came out of a pile. That's the good stuff. <laughs> Came out of pile iron. Yeah. Interesting horn. I don't know if you guys are going to come back. Yeah, it's a big one. Calm down, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> get worked up, Chris. Sorry, I had to file that talk. <laughs> <laughs> sure heard what Chris called it last night. Oh, he did. Oh. There's always one in the crowd, huh? There's definitely one. one. <laughs> it's the fun thing about blacksmithing events, right? Just about everybody's a character. Hardly any blacksmiths and a bunch of comedians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10,000 comedians are out of work and we're all trying to break into the business. <laughs> because we all think we're funny. Sarah. Uh, there's not a hardy for this, is there? I got, you know, a hot cut. I, I've got a hot cut. You want me to do it? On, trust me. Yeah. Trust me. I believe in you. That's a mistake. <laughs> It's been a, a running experiment tool for the longest. Um, there was a while back, there was a big kerfuffle in the blacksmithing community about rather H13 would explode 
and kill you dead outright if you ma made it into strut tooling. So um, I've had this for two years now. Don't look exploded. And it's not exploded. I'll let you guys know if I live. <laughs> if I don't live, well, then you'll know. But. I'll just stand here while you hit it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, all the forge punches at, at Wysco Piston are made out of H13 and they haven't exploded. No? No. Nope. Like I said, it was, a, it was a thing that happened. I won't say who got that started, but it was a, it's a whole deal where it's like, you use H13, you come die. I was like, really? I think I'll try some H13. <laughs> Wherever the contrary is. Yes, forever the contrary. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm like, yo, you can't use that. Oh, really? Well, let me Watch just see. Me. Well, gee, I've been using it for the last two years, and I haven't had a problem. Two years ain't dead yet. Ah, that got roasty. Bottom of the bay. Try again. Try again. Well, whatever this material is, it does not act very well to being burnt. That's half roasted true. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does not like being burnt. Now I'm getting all the heat I need out of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Working when, quarter when, inch rod. When, when you're over. <laughs> yeah, when you want to work the big stuff, it ain't getting hot enough. Stick a little twig of yeah, material in there, and all of a sudden it's getting burnt alive. Yeah, like when you're done forge welding yeah. for the day? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't want to stop. My fire's perfect. It finally <laughs> gets up to heat. It's been perfect right. all day. Yeah. Oh. I've been battling it all day. It's finally perfect. You get that nice oh, yeah. glow around it. Yep. yep. I'm shutting down. Yep. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Maybe if I was a bit more attentive as a smith. I wouldn't have all these problems. <laughs> Just making a ring for this, so yeah. I drill it and rivet it together. So nice. How did everybody's tongs to come out? I don't you don't come out with there? Yeah, but I don't think they're all done enough. Yeah. No? Ever want to make a guy cringe? Go over to his shop and start using a hot cut on top of his hand. You know, like, oh, what is he doing? <laughs> Jamie, Geyer, and Goshen. <laughs> he gets on to me all the time because. So when I draw stuff down, a lot of times I'll go to the edge, but sometimes I don't <laughs> because I'm keeping the edge of the hammer, the leading edge of the hammer, behind the tip that I'm pushing. And so I'm striking, but I'm striking like in the center of the anvil, so I'm not actually ever contacting the anvil, but uh, that's one of Jamie's biggest pet peeves, is people striking in the center of the anvil, so sometimes I just do it to mess with them, <laughs> you know, on purpose. I'll be striking a class. So, so now, the best part of forging is, you really want to draw this out right in the center of the anvil. <laughs> You're like, no, you don't either. Come <laughs> on, oh, Jamie. Yeah, you do. Yeah, right. like, What's wrong with drawing out in the center of the anvil? <laughs> it's a little solid part. <laughs> you ever met Jamie? Guy or Goshen? He's very soft-spoken, so he's very quiet. You know, he's not a—he's not a, he's not a very—he's 
Huh? He's a mortician. Yeah, he's a mortician, you know, so. He's not a, he's not a very... He doesn't insert his will very often, you know. Authority, but you start striking the center of his ambles, by golly. He'll, he'll get on to you then, so. And again, he's a mortician, so maybe don't get him too on his bad side. He has Rob to do his talking for him. Yeah, yeah, he has Rob to do his talking, that's right. Fight with it. Now these rings, you can do them however you like. You can forge weld them up. You can just leave them round. You can oval them. <coughs> Octagonalize them. You can do whatever you like. One of those Dukes of Hazard things. Right about then, he knew he done messed up. <laughs> it was at that moment. <laughs> it was at that moment. He lost all credibility as a smith. <laughs> at that moment, women weep with tears. <laughs> Forge welding means I'm not even going to do that on this on the pump. You're, you're I, would have, I would have to use so much of that white powdered stuff, yeah. it wouldn't even be funny. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah. I was. I, I kid you not, Roll, I was pulling stuff out there yesterday. Yep. At a welding temperature and scale was forming on it. Really? It, it was just like instant. Yeah. Not, not in, it was coming out of the fire with, with scale on it. Huh. Yeah. All oxygen. That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's all oxygen in there. There's too many holes in the hole. And it, it's got big flame and no coke. <laughs> yep, that's anthracite for you. All show and no go. <laughs> Everybody just loves anthracite. Well, there you go. You guys can kind of see how it works. So yeah. a tongue ring will be all slip up and on. Be able to hold it like that. Build grip stuff nicely. Just like so. I'll get that drilled and put a rivet in there. Nice. Like pair tongs. Like pair tongs. So. Oh, there you go. I'll shut up. Savannah, who's off? Who's off? Somebody else can have the pleasure of using this fire. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you why enjoyed that. Is this, is this the, the new hammer? hammer? Oh, yeah. Huh? Is this the new one that you made? No, that's that's been that's the original. That's been my daily driver, yeah. Yeah, for yeah that's that's the one decade. with the wrought iron bod and the tool steel faces. That's the the guy that's the head of the shop. But Connor Prairie, Nathan Allen. Mm -hmm. I've seen him three times make about a two pound cross bean out of rot. Yeah. He, one thing he does is, I thought the first time I saw it, and that's ingenious. He'll draw down that to the peen and mm -hmm. let it fish mount on yeah. purpose and then weld a square piece in into that V. Yeah. Anyway, he'll. He'll do that taper in one heat. On a two inch square. Yeah. Of course, that's a, every that's a blow, bit brutal. The hammerhead, every blow he makes, doesn't matter what he's doing, the hammerhead's about a foot behind his head. 
coming down. He's swinging for the fences. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But I doubt if this hammer is way too pound. You got to miss it on that. It's time to go to the animal shop. This one rot as well. JB Weld. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, well. this here's rot. Yeah. With tool steel face as that's, well. That's it. how he does this one? Yeah. Is it Same same thing, bird's mouth. Mm -hmm. um, but we were we were instructed not to dress the bird's mouth by Tom and then oh, yeah. to chisel. Yeah. You know, chisel in, cut it in even deeper. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's then, the one I cracked. Then the way this so. kinda went in is like the bird's mouth actually kinda like overlapped it. You know, I, so I to kinda protect it. Yeah. Last year okay. at the, at the so. state fair. I sent everybody to lunch, so I was just peddling around, and I wanted to try to do a cleft weld uh -huh. on a bits on tongs, you know. And yeah. I was the only one there, and I'd pull them out, and they'd squirt out. And I held it up on a little block, and you know, everything I did, it wasn't working. Finally, a little light went off. Ding! I held them with a pair of tongs together. I would. And yeah. set that bit down in the corner of the fire pot mm -hmm. and held it there. And started cranking it. When it got up to a welding temperature, I, I hit on the end of that rain, and mm -hmm. it was set. <laughs> Is this the one that you cracked in for, when you were making it for a customer? No. Oh, okay. No, that one I left at home. So I making hard choices. Is this rot there? Yeah, that's rot with steel faces welded in. And I actually made that with Keith. He came yeah. up to my shop. Yeah. And then we made that in the... Rot, rot iron with steel face. Place? Oh, oh that's LB. I thought it was yeah, a K yeah, something. Yeah, that's his. Oh, okay. That's Keith Bear. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if my mark's in there or not, is it? No. No. Because all we did is we uh, welded it all together and then I finished it. Yep. Yep, oh, that's okay. right. Sweet. Yep. That's good. They still that's hammer, so. And ever since then, he's been a welded machine. Yeah. He it's welds stuff fun. together that shouldn't be welded together. <laughs> it's, fun. it's like, you know you can put a rivet in that. And he's like, ooh, we'll weld it. Oh. I told you it was addicting. Yeah, as soon as you stop being afraid of it. Yep. I'm going to have a ton of welding in this uh, masterwork grill of mine to do. So, it'll be a thousand scrolls in it. Oh, thousand geez. filigree scrolls in it. So oh, the wow. little ones? Yep, the eighth yeah. by eight <coughs> yeah, scrolls, yeah. so it's gonna be real finesse. You know about this? I know a little bit about <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 I got a whole bucket. I thought that was a good challenge, but it scared off a lot of the bigger names on Instagram and stuff. It's like Yeah, yeah. I it's one of those where they I saw that they saw it, you know, they're like, Oh, they seen the message but never got a reply, so I was right. like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Sitting me out here by myself, guys, eighth, that's fine. Eighth inch stock's a whole new world. Yep, for welding it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got a I lot of got, to do. I finally got to squeeze it in the fire while well, I was in the fire. Yeah. Squeeze it with tongs, you know. Get, yep. Instead of even worrying about whacking it, and then then I could whack it the second time, yeah. you know. I got a whole bucket full of squished up ones, <laughs> <laughs> burnt up ones. Have you got any uh, represe yeah. content coming up? Uh, any, any repose stuff? Yeah, I do. I, I've got a good bit of that coming up. Um, I want to go through... Uh, Jessica got me a book of, like, cantus leaf patterns and stuff. And I wanted to take and, like, do a series where I go through each one of those and make them. You know, make each a cantus leaf and, like, go through, like, do a do a step-by-step -step video kind of thing. Like, here's process one, two, three... That'd be great. That kind of thing. Go yeah. through the acanthus leaves. So. Okay. Um, now I have a question. Just what exactly is a canthus leaf? I mean, well, is, it, a, is it an actual plant, or it's is it an just actual plant? But it's kind of like uh, uh, it's a generic term. Oh, generic now, term for a stylistic for, leaf. For like? a stylistic leaf, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. But there's an actual acanthus plant. But some of the ironwork, like older ironwork that you see out there, that they'll have acanthus leaves in them. Right, they're like, this is an acanthus leaf. It's a very artistically rendered, very stylized acanthus leaf. It's not yeah. actually like the real acanthus leaf. Yeah. So, um, Roman architecture, like Greek Roman architecture, uh -huh. Greco Roman architecture, they have the like the actual acanthus kind of leaf, the plant itself. They were into more of making realism. But with like French Baroque ironwork, 
they were more flamboyant about it. They were like, well, right. we don't want it to just be flat. We want it, you know, we want that thing to twist yeah. and curl yeah. and blow in the wind. Oh, and we yeah, want it to, make you know, the feather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they want movement yeah. and light and shadow and, you know, they want it to be more flamboyant versus, right. uh, versus English and, and, and some of the uh, other, uh, like Italian and things like that. They were a bit more reserved on their, uh, that time period. A little more symmetrical, too. Get a little more symmetrical. Yeah. yeah. Versus French ironwork wasn't yeah, at all. It was kind of like there's a gate in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's like a lot of other stuff. Very you know. eclectic. Yeah, very eclectic that, mix that's, of things. That's Cherubs, one thing I you know, have a problem. Alligators. Yeah, exactly. and, like, what is yeah. going on in this scene? Yeah, that's, that's the problem I have with a lot of ironwork is it's too busy. You've only got two eyes and both of them are trying to look in all directions at once. <laughs> I, I try. See, I, that's my favorite. Part I know, of but the th but the thing of it is, I try to go by Jim Hoffman's theory, which is keep it simple, make it elegant. You know, don't again, make it overcomplicated. His he has a very colonial centric yeah. approach. Yeah, time work, and that's what it was. That was the taste of the yeah. colonists. Yeah. Very. It's, uh, you know, yeah. simple, whatever. but not simple, clean, yeah. cleanliness yeah. of line, it's, it's you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, because, because yeah. I mean, some, some, some okay. ironwork, okay. you know, yeah. I, yeah. in my That's opinion, is way overdone, oh, you know, no, it wasn't? but uh, the one thing that, that uh, used to drive my son nice nuts is, are you familiar with like the, the um, Ring of the Lords movies? Yeah, yeah, well, the thing of it is, my son's watching the movie. I'm kind of, I'm looking at all the ironwork and stuff in the background and like, oh, ever they put a, they ever put since a lot I started of, blacksmithing, I, I, I can't watch a movie without looking nice for the ironwork. Like yeah, I know. There's same a cool, thing. there's like a cool castle. I'm like, okay, is that fake or real stuff? Ah, it's welded. Ah, you're like, ah, oh, it's a faux hinge. That's nice. You know, yeah. it's like. <laughs> I get all yeah, sorts I know. of excited that's, when yeah, it's Lord an of the Rings, real that, thing. That gets me. I, I look it, at that ironwork it and it's like, accident. wow. <laughs> that, that's so what's that's what's really that's nice is what you should look at is some of the um, yeah. uh, think Cleveland there down Martin Amazing. Luther King <laughs> Drive. <laughs> some of those... Uh, uh, that was my first attempt, I thought. Some of the uh, different gardens they have mm -hmm. and some of the ironwork in there. Because uh, one year Ken Roby restored one of those pieces of ironwork. I think it was a Hungarian ironwork. It's not on the main drive. You have to go up onto the back drive. But we saw it at his shop and they had let that they had let that thing go to pot. And by the time he got through with it, it was a it was a record. Roy, yeah. <laughs> we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> I'm good at making messes like that. So. That's. Wow. What a clinker. Where you want it? Hey, that's a decorative art piece Somewhere right the there. Wall. Yeah, lacquer it. Somewhere in the gravel away from. I'd sell that to a purple-haired kid, no problem. <laughs> it's a geo over there. Yeah. That's what I'm there, geo. We don't say left anymore. It's not just purple-haired kid. Call it dragon snot. That's a meteorite. <laughs> I kind of thought that's what it was going on down there. Yeah. Well, well the thing of it is that, that that one yeah, forge we have up there at Burton Century yeah. Village, uh, the one with the, the, the big bellows on it on the inside shop, there were times I used to get done at the end of the day, and I'd put the hook down in and lift a complete donut. I gotta give, I gotta give that a it would, now, it, Bill, working The way it melted and formed, it never blocked <laughs> off the airflow, and at the end of the day, you just reached in there and you lift this donut out. Hey, night, you get air. Talking about. No, I didn't. Oh. Alrighty. 